Well, this is a wonderful honor, which I wasn't expecting, and those are always the best ones. I probably, I uh, uh, have been to Naples perhaps eight times in my life, and uh, uh, really love the place, especially the uh, the. Uh, National Museum, the Nazi Museo Nazionale, with, yep. with the uh, Roman and Pompeian paintings, which I've been back to see several times. It always, it struck me the first time I saw them that the history of Western art had sort of been all downhill ever since. <laughs> but not entirely, because my favorite, uh, one of my, all, my almost favorite painting is also by Pomeri Giannino in the Capo di Monte, Museum, his portrait of a woman called Antea, a woman with an incredible fox fur around her neck with the teeth biting the tail of the fox. And it was recently uh, exhibited, in fact, at the Frick uh, Collection here in New York. You might have, might have seen it then. Uh, and, uh, well, I, I was very surprised that you, that Nelson, you found my, my lines about Naples, which I thought were buried in a very, very early poem. And I was, I had actually Xeroxed it, thinking I would read it here. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to anyway. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. The, the, whole, the whole poem, if you can stand to listen to it. Um, and then I don't quite know what else uh, I should, should do. Perhaps nothing. We'll see. Um, uh, this poem is, is titled, And You Know, not to be confused with my other long poem, As We Know. Uh, this, this was one of my very early poems, written, I believe, in 1955, before I had traveled anywhere. And it was also the year where I accidentally won a Fulbright scholarship to Europe. I say accidentally because I had been uh, turned down for it. And uh, then at the last minute, uh, they told me that Somebody hadn't accepted theirs, and so I could have it if I wanted it. And I went to um, France, which really changed my life, and I ended up living there for about 10 years and um, visiting Italy as, as often as I could. Uh, but this poem is about... Um, it's written obviously by someone who is desperate to travel. It's full of place names. And um, I didn't get that wish until uh, shortly after I wrote the poem. The girls, protected by gold wire from the gaze of the onrushing students, live in an atmosphere of vacuum in the old schoolhouse covered with nasturtiums. At night, comets, shooting stars, twirling planets, suns, bits of illuminated pumice, and spooks hang over the old place. The atmosphere is breathless. Some find the summer light nauseous and damp, but there are those who are charmed by it going out into the morning. We must rest here, for this is where the teacher comes. On his desk stands a vase of tears a quiet feeling pervades the playroom. His voice clears through the interminable afternoon. I was a child once under the spangled sun. Now I do what must be done. I teach reading and writing and flaming arithmetic. Those in my home come to me anxiously at night asking how it goes. My door is always open. I never lie and the great heat warms me. His door is always open, the fond schoolmaster. We ought to imitate him in our lives, for as a man lives, he dies. 
To pass away in the afternoon on the vast, vapid bank you think is coming to crown you with hollyhocks and lilacs or in gold at the opera requires that one shall have lived so much. And not merely asking questions and giving answers, but grandly sitting like a great rock through many years. It is the erratic path of time we trace on the globe with moist fingertip, and surely the globe stops. We are pointing to England, to Africa, to Nigeria, and we shall visit these places, you and I, and other places, including heavenly Naples, queen of the sea, where I shall be king and you will be queen, and all the places around Naples. So the good old teacher is right to stop with his finger on Naples, gazing out into the mild December afternoon as his star pupil enters the classroom in that elaborate black and yellow creation. He is thinking of her flounces and is caught in them as if they were made of iron. They will crush him to death. Goodbye, old teacher. We must travel on, not to a better land perhaps, but to the England of the sonnets, Paris, Colombia, and Switzerland, and all the places with names that we wish to visit. Strasbourg, Albania, the coast of Holland, Madrid, Singapore, Naples, Salonika, Liberia, and Turkey. So we leave you behind with her of the black and yellow flounces. You were always a good friend, but a special one. Now as we brush through the clinging leaves, we seem to hear you crying. You want us to come back, but it is too late to come back, isn't it? It is too late to go to the places with the names. What were they anyway, just names? It is too late to go anywhere but to the nearest star, that one that hangs over the hill, beckoning like a hand of which the arm is not visible. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, pupils. Goodbye, my master and my dame. We fly to the nearest star, whether it be red like a furnace or yellow, and we carry your lessons in our hearts. The lessons in our hearts are the same. Out of the humid classroom, into the forever. Goodbye, old dog, Trey. And so they have left us feeling tired and old. They never cared for school anyway. And they have left us with the things pinned on the bulletin board and the night the endless, muggy night that is invading our school. <laughs>